Week in Review, April 8th, 2024. With team quarterfinals out, it seems like CrossFit has programmed several repeated movements from the open. Most podcast talking heads have said this seems a bit uncreative and not a well-balanced test to get to semis. Do you have any response or opinions on the reason to repeat so many movements? Well, with the team, team events, it's a little, um, it's challenging to do a lot of things at this stage because of the nature of the team stuff and have them logistically uh, work out. So that's one consideration. But another piece is there's foundational movements in CrossFit, and this is a significant piece that are okay and worth repeating on a regular basis, e and even in this online phase. Furthermore, on that statement, the, these things being able to be easily judged by others or um, people within your gym or head judges or um, to whatever um, filming standard we're asking or judging standard we're asking, there's movements that are better for that than others. So meaning, yes, um, introducing a lot of new movements at this stage or radically changing them would be what it seems people might want to see or sometimes they'd like to see, but it's not necessarily the right application for the test or for the logistics and the um, repeatability of the test and the actual ability to execute on the test. So this isn't just a workout you're going to do in your gym with your teammates um, to train. This is an actual test that has to be judged and conducted in a um, set time frame with set movements. So um, I don't think it's uncreative. I think you can be creative and still see the same movements. Um, there's different looks and different expressions. It goes back to like this criticism about how 0.1, 24.1 and 24.2 were so similar. Again, like people are looking at the couple things that there were similarities with and not looking at the big picture and how different they truly were. At Michael Brink 5761, hi Dave, the general consensus among top athletes is the open doesn't matter. An idea I had was that you notify athletes before the season starts that event one of either the semifinals or the games would be your open score. I, if you finished fifth in your region amongst the people competing at your semifinal, then you would autom automatically take fifth place on event one at that semifinal. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, it, matters less these days than it has in the past for sure um it's not always going to be that way we will make it matter again more so it still matters you still need it to advance you still need to do well but there was a time frame when um several years ago when yes it, it did matter a lot more i wouldn't say it doesn't matter you still need it to advance and then you still need to do well exceptionally well at quarterfinals but uh but we have plans to fix that at the cheerio 27 i never signed up for the open since 2012 because there's always weights selected that was not accessible to my strength capabilities i love this year's programming for its it's inclusive programming and three weeks is very appropriate to cater to the CrossFit community. You failed to address that prior to the open, which left Rich Froning's, Rich Froning's protesting its simplistic nature of movements. Next year, advertise it more as a three week open for the majority, meaning programming is accessible, challenging, of course. Well, see, like I've always viewed it that way. Like I think it's always been, um, the open programming has always been for the majority. And at times there's uh, moments where the elite can separate themselves or excel. And also even in the simplistic programming or the base workouts, the elite and the best in the world have a chance to separate themselves just through their scores. Um, complexity, not through movements and um, gimmicks, but actually making it difficult through intensity. So we're trying to make a lot of these difficult through intensity. And I think we've accomplished that this year and also through all the other previous years. When you look at a majority of the programming for the Open throughout the years, there is very much um, 
it, everyone can do them for the most part, except there might be points where people couldn't. So, and even the weights, the weights have always been pretty reachable by the average man, except for when you get to a certain point, maybe you had to do more. So I appreciate the comment, but I do disagree with it. And thank you for signing up for the open. At Corey Looney, hey Dave, love these videos. Thanks for all the updates. In the spirit of shouting out CrossFit methodology and how much it works, wanted to give a shout out to my mom, Betsy Looney, Looney who just competed her 13th open this year in the women's 65 plus category and did, and in 24.3 did over 30 pull-ups, the most she's ever done in a single workout. She got me into CrossFit in 2011 where I then went on to coach, own an affiliate, compete at regionals, but honestly thanks, think it's so cool that CrossFit keeps her fit and has her continuing to hit PRs. The best, thanks again for everything you do. Super great, super cool story. So Betsy, this Corey's mom, completed her 13th Open. That's amazing. And in this year, in the women's 65 plus category, in 24.3, she did over 30 pull-ups, the most she's ever done in a single workout. Another great story. I love hearing these. It's the strength and power of CrossFit and specifically the methodology. So, uh, Corey, thanks for sharing that story. Your mom's kicking ass. At Danny B. 2005, hey, Dave, always appreciate these. Curi curious what translation version of the Bible you're reading. Um, the NIV, New International Version. And that was a whole journey. When I went to the bookstore, I went to Barnes & Noble to buy a Bible, and I saw all these different versions, and I was like, okay. I stepped away. I went home, started researching online, found, I thought the New International Version looked appropriate, so then I went back to Barnes & Noble and bought one of those. At Michael Red Rock 1113. From CrossFit Globe Cobre Valley in Arizona. We are so blessed to have the walkers as our coaches in the small town. Drop in if you're ever in the neighborhood. Reading keeps your brain in good working order. Sharing what you read with others is generous and kind. Keep it up. Yeah, reading totally keeps your brain in good working order. Um, it also, it's just... Uh, it's a way to disconnect from everything else going on. It's a way to um, exercise your brain. It's a way to just just um, educate yourself. There's so many benefits that come from it. I don't need to reiterate what he just said. Reading keeps your brain in good working order. Sharing what you read with others is generous and kind. At BM Claughlin, those who value animals more than people are a special type of twisted. At uh, Dan Taylor, 1991. Hi, Dave. You've talked about one-hour training not being effective for strength work and Metcons as enough. It's too much to cram in. Do you think lifting strength work should be separated into two sessions for most effectiveness? Example, one hour, 30 lifting strength in the AM and in the PM, 30 to 45 minutes Metcon cardio work or mix both together over two hours. Last questions. What are your thoughts on high rocks and athletes moving over such as Mal O'Brien and Christy O'Connell? So on the one hour of training not being effective for strength work and Metcons and it being too much to cram in, absolutely for an overwhelming majority of average CrossFitters or average people getting into CrossFit or just the, um, the even honestly, t to some extent, some people who are um, at a high level, one hour is totally enough and doing one session, either, you know, a constantly varied functional movements at high intensity with, um, call it a traditional CrossFit workout and or a strength session in isolation, one or the other, is more than you need. Now, here's the thing. You're talking, when, when you, well, let me say this. When you start combining those two in, uh, in a one-hour crammed class in an affiliate session, the intensity on one of them is going to give. And also, you're doing a lot for people who might not be ready for that volume or that amount of work. Are there people who can handle that in one hour? Absolutely. Are there people who um, can, can do all of that and do, it, um, do both of them with a high level of intensity? Sure. They've also put in a lot of base time. They've also trained for a long time. But a majority of people, I do not think that's appropriate. Also, a strength session, you know, a lot of the ways you see these expressed, they're expressed in like a 20-minute window or a 15-minute establish your one rep max or or work to a heavy and um, 
the problem with that is those sessions, you look at power lifters or weight lifters, they spend a whole hour or more just on doing that, giving the lift the right amount of rest. And that's how some CrossFit gyms, that's how old school CrossFit gyms do prescribe it. A thorough warm up, um, the lift with plenty of rest, and then a thorough cool down. When you have the Metcon, and then you have the lifting all crammed in one hour. So there's a compromise, and oftentimes the compromise is coaching, and the compromise is technique work. And um, people cram up the hour, keep people moving, and at the expense of, of giving feedback, of actually working with people, especially on the lift, um, in correcting their form. Now, the second part you said, do I think lifting strength work should be separated in two sessions for most effectiveness? One hour, 30 lifting strength in the AM and 30 to 45 PM Metcon cardio work. Here, here's the thing, who has time for that? Some people do, uh, some people create time for that. Some people for their goals want to work out that much. If you do, sure. But um, for a majority of the people going to affiliates, the hour that they put in at the affiliate is the only time they have. And um, unless your goals, unless you have specific competing goals or specific progress goals, because see, so it's not only about competing, it's also about progress. If you have individual um, performance and progress goals you want to meet and you think you can get there faster by, um, by doing more training throughout the day, sure. But I would never recommend it blindly without understanding the individual and what their current capabilities are. Now for the, for the professional athlete, basically, for the games level athlete and athletes that are competing to go to semifinals, yeah, those guys got to spend several hours a day training and they can't just do one hour session and uh, be fine. There are outliers. You'll hear stories of people who just do um, the, the hour class session and then make it to the semifinals, et cetera. But, but that's not the norm. So generally speaking, do not recommend, especially for new people or people who are, call it recreational CrossFitters, just trying to um, live a healthier life, to cram in both sessions in one hour. Last questions. What's your thoughts on high rocks and athletes moving over, such as Mal O'Brien and Christy O'Connell? Uh, I don't, I don't, I mean, what's that mean even moving over? I don't have many thoughts on that. If they, I think that's cool if they go compete in other things. Christy O'Connell, I think she's like a, um, sub three hour marathon or two. So she's a really fast runner. And so um, I don't know much about high rocks, but I know you have to be good at running for it. So it makes a lot of sense that she would do it. But yeah, training and doing other things is all, um, all good. Um, but I don't have any like, whatever, who cares? Go compete in that, compete in our stuff, compete in everything, compete. At Dan Gall 81, Hey Dave, is there a reason we've never seen any kettlebell movements in the open or semi or quarterfinals? Yes, one reason is the year we introduced the dumbbell um, was a big deal and people were able to run out to their local fitness stores or were more easily able to get dumbbells than they were kettlebells, especially at that time. So dumbbells are a little more common and pretty much a majority of the movements that you could do with a kettlebell, you can do with the dumbbell. So I would say more CrossFit gyms have dumbbells than they do kettlebells. That's one major reason. And one, um, and since um, a majority of the movements can be done with the dumbbell that can be done with the kettlebell, that's the other primary reason. So on the online stages, we probably won't have kettlebells in the near future. But at the other stages, in the in-person stages, sure, absolutely, we have. At 54C, hi Dave, love how you drop in to support local affiliates. Have you ever considered doing this internationally, say in Asia or Australia? I've done it internationally, both in Asia and Australia and Europe and South America. Actually not, um, not in Africa though, I've never been to Africa. So I do drop in a lot internationally when I travel for CrossFit work and um, Yes, I'll continue to do that. Also would be great to bring back the CrossFit Invitationals. To me, that was the highlight of the season back when it was a thing. Yeah, it was, it was a really cool event. I don't know if we'll bring it back, but really enjoyed it. At Polga 90 p hi Dave, are you adamant on the you should go to an affiliate statement? I'm a CrossFit level three trainer, plan on doing my level four. Been coaching and doing CrossFit for over 10 years. I own a small box and where I stand, I no longer feel aligned with CrossFit HQ and don't 
feel comfortable giving my money to private equity. On the other hand, I have visited many affiliates where classes and coaching are shit, and even some affiliates where coaches say the L1 guide is nonsense. I believe that I am a great cross uh, ambassador to the CrossFit ethos. Everything I do, I do because that's how the level one guide told me to. I'm in charge of a thriving and happy community of 80 plus members, but because I'm not affiliated, would you just blindly discard the work I've been doing while blindly supporting affiliates who do a shit job and actually drive people away from CrossFit? So I'm not blindly discarding the work you've done because it sounds like you've had a significant um, journey through our education. You care really about training and educating and uh, the people you coach. Um, so I'm not blindly discarding the work you've done while blindly supporting affiliates who do a shit job and actually drive people away from CrossFit. I'm supporting CrossFit affiliates and I'm gonna support affiliates who I believe will help people make a better difference. Um, your assertion there that I'm blindly supporting affiliates who do a shit job and actually drive people away from CrossFit, there are affiliates who are not as good as other affiliates. And instead of just shitting on them and say they drive people away from CrossFit, even those gyms have a thriving community of people that they are improving and making better. And it's on us to help make them better affiliates and make them better gyms to help keep people uh, in the family. And also, honestly, it's also on the local gyms and affiliates in the surrounding area. Rather than just um, turning your back on, a, on an upcoming trainer or an affiliate who's not as good as they should be or working to be better, um, mentoring and bringing them in and helping them become a better gym. But am I adamant to go back to your first statement, you should go to an affiliate statement or you should go to an affiliate? Absolutely, I am because here's the deal. Even when finding a gym to send friends and family to, um, you're someone like, I'll, I'll explain my journey. I'll look at the CrossFit affiliate map. And then I look at the gyms in the area. I see what level qualifications everyone has. I'll, I, um, I, if I know trainers in the area, I'll ask around. But I'm looking for CrossFit affiliates or people look still these days, people do look for CrossFit gyms to send people to or when they're traveling to CrossFit gyms. You might it sounds like you will have your level four in um, short order. You might be a great coach and have a great community and do wonderful things for people, but you'll never be found, at least in an example of this notion of I'm traveling somewhere or I'm sending someone to a gym. And this, I'm not alone in this. This is applied to thousands of other people because you're independent of CrossFit. So you're out on an island in your community and um, that's one benefit big benefit of being associated with the brand is is actually when people do are looking for the training now it's not to say anything about your training or that you're not a good trainer or that you don't have a great community but I will I don't think I can say that statement and dismiss the word I can say you should go to a CrossFit affiliate and I do believe that and not be dismissive of good trainers like you and others out there and people who are passionate about CrossFit but don't um, fly the flag on their gym. This point about you no longer feel aligned with CrossFit HQ and don't feel comfortable giving my money to private equity. I don't know why you don't feel aligned with CrossFit HQ. Maybe you can expand on that. And you don't feel comfortable giving your money to private equity. You're, giving, you're not giving your money to private equity. The money currently that, you, that any affiliate is paying isn't going to private equity. They'll see their return on investment in several years when they sell. Currently, the money you'd be paying for an affiliate fee is going back into CrossFit, and CrossFit is choosing what to spend that money on, where to reinvest it, what to build with. So I think you should disconnect from this notion that you're paying, if you were, because you're not, if you were to pay an affiliate fee, it's going right to private equity. No, if you're pay, pay, paying an affiliate fee, I mean, it's, it's supporting everything that's going on in the ecosystem in the HQ ecosystem, even the games to some extent, um, the affiliate team, all the operating aspects of the business, supporting, uh, it's supporting our, our pay. I mean, it's supporting the whole CrossFit um, system. So it's not going directly to private equity. Okay, let me see. 
Thanks for commenting on uh, abstract genius comments. Thanks for commenting on my remark. Change my username at Sevon's request. After reading the Bible, maybe start studying the science surrounding the links between climate change, drought, forest areas being cut down, and wild animal living areas, especially on the North American areas. If not, read the novel Autumn of a Hunter by Pat Stanley, written in the 60s, where mountain lion also moves into areas of timbering and human activity due to dr drought. It's prey searching for water around farmed animals and their water sources. Seems like common knowledge even when a no novelist knew this. Science over superstition, Dave. Start studying the science surrounding the links between climate change, drought, forest areas being cut down, and wild living areas. So those three you kind of lump together, but forest areas being cut down will definitely drive animals from their habitat. Droughts will too, but droughts are, so forest areas being cut down, not burned down, but cut down, are something that we do to the environment. Droughts are something that come and go and are common throughout um, millennia, throughout the history of, uh, of the universe, of the world. Um, it's a little different, and, and animals have learned to adapt to the drought scenarios. Yes, they go to where finding water and climate change. So here's the thing when you say climate change. The climate changes, and climate always changes, and climate has been changing for as long as this planet has been around. I assume you're me you mean anthropogenic climate change, which is human-caused climate change. Um, if that's what you mean, I would love to see your science around that and uh, the wild animals, dri it driving wild animals away from the living areas. Team quarterfinals wrapping up now. So um, pretty cool seeing all the uh, community and the teams that are trying to get to semifinals competing. Next up will be the individual and age group quarterfinals starting soon. And uh, I'm excited about that. I've been training and I feel good. I've been following CAP. Uh, CrossFit affiliate programming. We actually put the CAP daily workout on the main side, I'm sorry, on the CrossFit Games app. So if you go to the CrossFit Games app and look at the workout, it'll show you, actually that's not even CAP, I'm sorry, that's the workout of the day. I was following the workout of the day currently. Um, so really enjoying it and having a good time with, uh, with those workouts. And I heard recently from some friends that Fraser basically said he knows that we, something along the lines of, he knows we changed the games and the workouts to, to, um, to hinder his performance, let's say, or to try to hurt his efforts. That um, is a bold assertion. And I'm here to say that is not true. Um, but if you're gonna make an assertion like that, the burden of proof lies with him, not with us. So if he's going to say something like that, prove it. Show us what you have. Tell us what you think happened, and then I'll respond to that too. But uh, there's, something, there's something unique about making a statement like that because that assumes that every action, everything we programmed, everything we did at the games was focused on one man and not the totality of there's... 80 other individual athletes there and um, to think we were making or making decisions on programming and or changes and or um, potential outcomes to target one individual that's that's unique we we specifically over the years that I've programmed never think of individuals when programming the games you think of you think of what the best are capable of as a collective, but you don't think of an individual uh, man or woman when doing that. So I don't care if he responds or does respond, but frankly, at this point, it's on him to prove, uh, to prove that reckless statement. Let's just say that. All right, that's the week in review. Thanks for uh, tuning in.